Well, what's up, everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. This is part two of how to use a multimeter to repair your guitar. In our last video, we talked about basically how the meter works. When you look at a meter and you put the probes onto stuff, what numbers you're supposed to be looking for, and that sort of thing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take a Telecaster circuit uh, with two humbuckers hooked up to it. So it's a Tele Custom that I built. Uh, tele custom wiring setup that I built for a guy and so basically what we're gonna do is go through this thing and basically troubleshoot some of the common things and talk about what you're gonna see on the meter and what you're gonna you know look for so take what we know about the meter from last week and put it with this one and really put it in some real-world situations for what you're gonna see so let's go ahead and do that. And when we get done, we're gonna go over a couple of other little details uh, and wrap this thing up. So understanding how the meter actually works. So then let's go ahead and look at an actual guitar circuit. What I've got built here is basically a Telecaster control plate. And we've got uh, two pickups on the table over here. Everything's hooked up like it would be in the guitar. And we'll talk about why these bare wires are here in a minute. Let's actually go through this circuit. Let's walk through kind of the signal chain uh, of the circuit. We have our pickups over there, okay? And now we have um, our hot coming in here for our neck pickup. We have our hot coming in here for our bridge pickup. Before you jump in the comments and get all bent about terminology, remember that we, if you're really educated on this stuff, remember that we're trying to make this kind of accessible for everybody to learn from the very beginning. So we're just going to use some basic terms. As you get dive deeper into this stuff, you'll understand more and more technical stuff, but we're really talking about basic troubleshooting here. So here we have our hot for our bridge pickup. We have our hot for our neck pickup. They're both grounded here. And because they're humbuckers, they actually have four wires. And this green and black wire here and this green and black wire here are the series link for the humbuckers. If we want to start talking about splitting humbuckers and all that sort of stuff, we have a separate video for that. We can point you to that with one of those gray things there. Um, then what we've got over here is our volume pot. So our volume pot always has one lug grounded and then the this goes out to the switch. So you have the pickups come into the switch are hooked up to the volume pot. Then you have coming off of the volume pot with this, it's almost like a parasitic circuit, if that makes sense, is your tone knob. So now you have your tone knob over here. Uh, so you have the signal wire coming over here to kind of bleed off signal uh, where the capacitor bleeds the signal off to ground. And that's basically how that works. So what you have here is basically the volume knob creates a signal to ground for everything. And when the volume knob is all the way down, it basically means that everything is shorted to ground and it just shuts it all off. And of course, the varying resistance up to 250 or 500 or whatever gives you your volume. Your tone circuit then kind of leeches off a particular frequency determined by your capacitor and varies how much of that it does by the knob. That's basically all it is. And then here we have our output jack. And this is technically an output jack, not an input jack, because the signal's flowing this way, right? Out to the amp. One thing to know about guitar circuits when we're troubleshooting them is every component needs to be grounded. So your pickups, your switch, your, well, parts of your switch, depending on the switch, your volume pot, and your tone pot all need to be grounded. Now on a Telecaster control plate, that is the plate itself all these con components need to be grounded and c contrary to popular belief they don't need to be grounded in the same place necessarily because they're actually being terminated by this ground here so the ground on your guitar cable that's grounded at your amp that is the ground that's the main ground so everything in your guitar needs to be hooked somehow to that main ground whether it be your shielding your volume pot your tone pot, your switch, depending on the situation, all needs to be grounded. So let's start following some signal. Let's say you pick up your guitar and the, um, oh, let's say the neck pickup doesn't work, okay? What we really wanna find out first of all, cause it could be the switch, it could be all kinds of stuff. We wanna make sure that the pickup actually works. So here's what we do. We come over here, we put one lead of our multimeter on the 
hot lead of the pickup where it plugs into the switch. And we put the other one on ground. And we check our resistance. And if we know what our pickups are, they should be, you know, 6K, 7K, 8K, 12K, whatever the value of that pickup is, that's what it should be at the switch where the wire comes into the switch and ground. If that doesn't work, if it reads open, like we discussed earlier, the pickup is bad. Okay, well, that works. The pickup's reading 7.8K, but it still doesn't work. Then we function our switch over to another position, to the bridge position, for example, and we check it there. Well, that looks like that pickup reads correctly also. But the neck pickup's not working, but the bridge pickup is. Well, if both pickups read correct at the switch, but the switch only functions correctly in one position, there must be something wrong with the switch. Simple as that. Is the pickup good? Yes. Does it function? No. Function the switch. Does the switch work in another position? Yes then the switch must be bad if it only works in one position. We verify the pickups first, then we verify the switch. What if we plug in our guitar and nothing works at all? Here's what we could check. We could check the value of our tone pot to make sure, because all signal in the guitar runs through the tone pot, or I mean the volume pot. All signal in the guitar runs through the volume pot. So we could check the value of R. So here's how we would do that. You see here that the volume pot is always grounded right here. So I just put my probe on the ground anywhere on the pot. And then this middle lug, cause that's the output to the get output to the cable. So, right. See, this is your output jack. So between ground and the output lug, which is the middle one, I check the value. With the knob all the way on 10, it should read whatever the value of the pot is. 500, 250. With it all the way on zero, it should read zero. It should read a short. If I sweep through the volume pot, it should gradually go from zero to 250 or zero to 500. If it's all notchy or has some gaps in it or something, You'll probably hear that as a crackle in your volume pot, and it's time to replace your volume pot. See how we're just following the signal? What if our tone pot doesn't work? If our tone pot doesn't work, first of all, capacitors 99.9% .9 of the time never go bad. Usually it's a ground issue. What if our tone pot doesn't work? Well, if our tone pot doesn't work, uh, how would we check that? First of all, the very first thing I would check if a tone pot's not working, is I would make sure that the chassis of it is grounded, okay? And we discussed what the meter should look like. We should see all zeros if the meter, if the tone pot is grounded. If the tone pot is not grounded, that's probably why it doesn't work. One common place where we see this many, many times is in a situation where you have a wiring di schematic like this on a pit guard. So like the Telecaster, it's grounded through the plate right here. But you notice I added a ground from the volume to the tone on this one because these guts are actually going coming out and going on to a pick guard in a custom. So if you have a pick guard, you need to make sure or on a Les Paul or an SG or anything like that where you don't have a metal plate connecting everything, you need to make sure you have a wire that actually connects a ground from the volume pot to the tone pot. Every component should be grounded. And honestly, those are the main troubleshooting situations. If a pickup doesn't work, you check it at the switch. If you check both your pickups at the switch and they one works and one doesn't, but we know the pickups are good, the switch is bad. If we check between the output of the volume pot and ground, and it's crackly or it shows an inconsistent reading as we sweep it from 500, which would be all the way on to zero, which is all the way off, then we know the volume pot is bad. Or if we have no volume at all and we're seeing weird readings on our meter from there, we know our volume pot is bad. 
if we don't have a good ground on our tone pot, we know that we need to ground our tone pot. Now the same troubleshooting can happen on your tone pot. You can actually check the output of your tone pot or you actually check it between um, where the capacitor hooks up to it here and where the, in the input signal hooks up to it here. Sweep it back and forth and make sure that it's nice and smooth. Most of the time, if a pot's going bad, you'll hear it in the signal. It'll crackle and make weird scratchy sounds. But if you have a non-functioning guitar, that's where you gotta get out your meter and check it for good. All right, so pretty much makes sense, right? Uh, basically what you wanna do is just kind of uh, logically follow the signal through the guitar. That's what I personally would do if I was troubleshooting your guitar. If you brought me a broken guitar, I would troubleshoot that. From input, which is the pickups, to output, which is the output jack. I would just follow it all the way through just like that. There's all this weird stuff about star grounding and ground loops and all this stuff. First of all, you can't have a ground loop in a guitar. Um, as we talked about a few minutes ago, everything terminates at the output jack. There is no way to have a ground loop in a guitar. We have a whole nother video about what causes ground loops and how that works. We can put one of those gray things up here and you can watch that there and then you will actually learn what that really is. Uh, second of all, uh, when we talk about shielding, um, one of the things that I see a lot of times, people want to 100% be convinced uh, that they need to shield the control cavity of their guitar. And then I get a phone call saying my pickup doesn't work or there's I'm having grounding issues. What's usually happening is it's touching something that's not supposed to be touching. People will argue with me till as long as the day is. I don't, I don't care. A wire this long does not act as, as an antenna. Your pickup is where the noise comes from. Shield around your pickups, shield the back of your pick guard. Only time I would ever recommend shielding a control cavity because it causes more trouble than it's worth is for, especially for uh, those that have n not as much experience doing it. Um, it causes a lot more trouble than it's worth. The only time I would ever recommend doing that is if you have no other place to put shield on your guitar because you just need the square inches of shielding, okay? So if you wanna understand how shielding works, we'll put another gray thing up there for that video so you can go and watch that. You want square inches of video, or square inches of shielding, and you want them to be grounded. That's what you want. I would not put it around your pots and your caps and your switch and your output jack if you can at all help it. Faraday cage, all that garbage that is all made up stuff from other industries that has nothing to do with the guitar. So don't worry about any of that. People overthink all this stuff way too much. Um, the type of wire, all that kind of stuff. People way overthink this stuff. Uh, just make sure that you learn how to solder cleanly. Um, we have a whole course for that. We'll put a link up for that. Hopefully you can put all these things together and uh, be able to troubleshoot your guitar. Don't overthink it. Just People in Facebook groups are gonna have you talking in circles. Don't overthink it. Just, is the pickup good? Yes. Is the switch good? Yes. Is the volume pot good? Yes. Is the tone pot grounded and is it good? Yes. Is the output jack not worn out? Yes. Done, that's all you need to worry about. And if you overthink any of this stuff and worry about where your wires go, it just don't, just play the guitar. The more overthinking it you do, the more trouble you're gonna have, honestly. <laughs> Uh, as long as you can solder cleanly and and use a meter and that's it if you have any questions about any of this stuff put it in the comments and if you want me to make a video diving into any of this stuff individually please let me know and we'll make a video about that you know if it's about volume pots only or switches only or um, whatever uh, if we don't have a video about it already we have 450 videos so make sure you subscribe because we have tons of other videos, so it's probably already been covered, but if it hasn't, put it in the comments below and uh, we'll make a video about it. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you soon.